time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Time is running out for our players of the first United States of American Chrononaut. So no, let's not delay. So let's do a quick review of where everyone is and what everyone is doing. So last time, um, Desi was attacking DJ Double J right up there. Um, she, she was able to attack back because she's so hyped up on Sumatran coffee that she took out some of his energy... Uh, his energy and his chassis there. Uh, so he's disabled. What else is going on? Oblo was heading after Desi to, to get a card, some cards he needs. Desi was heading after DJ Double J to get some cards he needs. DJ Double J is looking for a particular card, and she actually just found the card she needed in Desi's hand. Um, she was heading forward to the future to look in here for the card, but Desi, since he's from a, a a further future time than DJ Double J, he was able to get the card first from there. Uh, he didn't know that's what she was after, although we can all see their IDs. They don't know each other's, but he thought it seemed like the best one to take, so he did. Um, and I really try to see it from his perspective, and it did seem like the best one to him. Um, what else? We have two people in the past there, both Nun and TD. They're both... Um, Let's see, TD, he has to prevent the uh, assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He did that. So now, what does he need to do? He needs to go back forward in time and patch up what he needs and then head back again um, to the, the um, uh, what's it called, the patent office. And then none, she has the cards she needs, doesn't she? Uh, so she just needs to get them all put into play and go to the patent office and back in time. And she, last time we posited that she has a pretty good shot of winning. Um, these guys would really have to come out of their own affairs in order to stop her. If they don't do that, I think none will be our victor. We'll see. And Desi's taking another shot at DJ, DJ Double J. She'll be the blue or the yellow die in this. So he's get two, he gets 2d6 plus 1, she gets 1d6 plus 5. There we go. 4. She beats him again <laughs> um, quite handily. That star is a 6. So now she gets a free attack back. She doesn't get any bonuses. Um, 2d6 uh, versus just a straight 1d6 plus 2. And uh, the defender won once again. So whenever you are directly attacked, you may counterattack but only if the attack misses. So I wonder if that means he gets to a attack. It's, I don't know that he was di eh, directly attacked. Uh, well, they're using counterattack as the word, so I'm thinking it's not going to continue the the attack because what she did was a counterattack. I don't know if his counterattack applies to counterattacks. Uh, I'm going to say no. All right, so Oblio has gone... Um, to Desi now, and he is going to try and attack Desi to get one of the cards he needs. So, let's see, we'll, we'll use the big die will be for Desi, and the smaller die will be Oblio. Um, it's it's going to be 2d6 plus 7 versus 1d6 plus 2, so it's really unlikely. Um, 3 plus 7 is 10, yeah, 3. So he, he had no problem taking it. Now it was the case where it's five above, I think. Uh, I didn't specify this rule ahead of time. So normally if, if you do an attack, you're doing it against their um, upgrades. In this case, in this combination game, you can take from their hand cards. Um, it was supposed to be one card. But when you attack upgrades, you can destroy it if you get five or higher five more than they got, and he, that's the case here, because ten is more than five high, greater than three, um, but I didn't specify what difference that would make to just taking cards, so I'm still going to say that you can only take one card. Um, how this would work if these guys were playing is they, Desi would just hand him his hand of cards, and he could pick out the one he wanted. Well, no. No. I think he has to say out loud which card he wants. Um, and he's saying 1917, so everyone can hear that. Kind of goes with the the kind of memory aspect of the game. Those of you thinking of trying this um, this combination at home, you could try it the other way too. Um, the the reason why I didn't want him to just take the hand build to pick is it makes um, conspiracy research uh, less of a, a compelling move because you can just 
you know, if you can just look at their cards when you attack them, then that makes conspiracy research less exciting. Though, you know, maybe it balances out because an attack is it's kind of difficult to to make work. You have to follow the person and do all this stuff. So I don't know. Try, if you're going to try it, try it both ways and see what works best for you. All right, and the race is really on between TD and Nun. She's gone back and flipped that to Paradox. Again, people don't know what's on her card. And I'm playing that they don't really have knowledge of these different IDs, because really I don't. I don't know what's in there. I suppose you could surmise that there are some that are that are just for the early American chrononauts, so those would be on the farther side. So if you showed an interest there, you would want to be in the past. But I don't know I, if I'm considering them having that sort of metagame type knowledge. Though maybe it's maybe it'd be for the best, because otherwise I, I do think she does have um, a particular particular advantage. Uh, that's okay though. Um, but anyway, TD, he could have, you know, if he had any kind of money, he could have patched up his final year, which is 1974 this turn, but he has to, you know, he has to move horizontally across. He only has one buck. Um, next turn he should be able to get more because he did do some antiquing in the past, uh, in 1865. Let's move the, t oh, let's move the, let's move the, um, let's move the, let's move the, let's move the, uh, time mechanic. Four. That's not as far as we would want him to move. One, two, three, four. Another attack. This time DJ Double J is initiating against Desi. 2d6 plus 0 versus 1d6 plus 2. Uh, well, she got it that time. The white ones were hers. So she's going to be able to take a card. She's going to take this one. That's the card she needed, right? Cosmonauts. Orbit the moon. You can see why Desi took it. He was thinking he could he could use it to make a quick getaway to get an extra turn by patching there. But she got it instead, and she is going to actually get to use it to make a quick getaway. Um, three plus five is eight, so she can go here. And that actually costs no movement to get to that paradox year. No actions to move that. So she has to move eight more. And does she have everything? She has 68 and 69 are both patched. 45 is still in trouble though, so she's got to move back there. And we said she had 8, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, I guess 2, she'll go right here. And she'll have to wait till. oh no, she gets another action because she flipped that. So she'll flip this back over. Um, the problem is, is it's 1945 that she has to flip, and that's going to require this one to be flipped as well as this one. She's got to flip all of those, so that's at least three turns before she can even head back to the patent office. Desi's attacking again. This time he's going to attack Oblio, though. Uh, 2d6 plus 1 versus 1d6 plus 1. Desi should have the, the advantage here. God, he is really a bad attacker. He's really good when it came to, like, assassinating people. But when it comes to someone who knows he's there and is fighting back, he's just been doing terrible. Um... And shoes comfortable hat doesn't allow a counterattack over. So does he just kind of wasted a turn? Does he want to move? Does he even want to move? Uh, probably. No, I, I guess he could want to move to the time mechanic. And he just gets to go four, and that's gonna take him there. Yet more fighting this time. Oblio versus Desi. Yeah, and he gets it easily. So he's going to get the final card he needs from Desi. Desi had both of them, both of Oblio's cards, 1918 right here. So now Oblio has everything he needs. He just has to go get the time timeline in order. That's if Nun doesn't get there first, finish the game. She has an appeal to world opinion. I'm not even going to roll because she can for sure get there, right? Then she gets another turn. Um, does she even, does she want to put a marker down? Oh, she already has her marker down. She probably forgot to do that. She, money has been no object for her. Anyway, so she's going to roll 1, 6 plus 2. That gives her 7. Um, and she's got to get to 1787, and she can get there no problem. Uh, flip this over, and that's going to change 1791, which is what she needs, and 1846, which is right here. That's going to send this item into the future, into the junkyard. All right, and she's right there. She could do an action, but I don't know if it's even worth her time. This game's about over. Let's move our mechanic. It might be the last time we get to move it. That's eight. 
I know it won't be the last time. That's guaranteed eight. One, two, three, four. It's gonna stop right there. All right, slowly but surely, DJ Double J is getting things flipped so that uh, World War II ends as it has in our timeline once again, which is what she needed the atom bomb to be dropped on Japan. Um, meanwhile, Desi has repaired his time machine with uh, the help of the time machine mechanic there. And Oblio is on the move. He's almost got the timeline looking like he needs it to look um, in order for himself to get his own victory. Uh, so it could actually be pretty close. Uh, it, it's not It's not a sure thing for none. There is the, the, the matter of taking a number. So when she goes to the patent office, which she'll be able to on this turn, no problem, um, she has to take a number. And that number is the number of turns she has to wait uh, before she can get her patent. So if Oblio can get back there in time, which he has the money to do after he gets everything all patched up, it could just be a matter of, you know, it could just be a tussle between these two. All right, and as predicted, Nun is at the patent office there. Let's do the big roll, see what she gets. Um, this roll is pretty important. If it's a low number, she that, that could just give her the game. Now she can take a number on any turn, so if she doesn't like the roll, she can always take another number next turn. Five. That's probably not the number she wants, is it? No, it's probably not. So we put this little marker on the five. Oh, and TD is heading back. He's getting very close. This could be a lot closer. I was saying it's kind of a lock for none, but I didn't consider it fully enough. Um, it could just be down to a, a lot of fighting. All right. In which case, let's take a look at their 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 fighting skill. Let's see. None, I would think, would have the advantage against TD, but it's pretty luck based as well. Uh, let's move our time machine mechanic. Let's move three, one, two. Where is everyone? Oh yeah, two, three. DJ Double J as well has the timeline looking how she wants it to. Now she she's the one person without a, a finished time machine, however, though, so that could be a big problem for her. Um, yeah, so she still needs to find a weapon somewhere, somewhere out there. There's the weapon she needs. Uh, so she's going to be involved in a scavenger hunt, and less of a race. Let's go to Desi. Desi's going to take another shot at DJ Double J, trying to take that card he needs. And that's, finally, his luck is, is bearing out. That's going to allow him to take it. So, that's 1929. So Desi has all the cards he needs. Unfortunately, um, 1917 is paradox, and he can in, infer that um, Oblio wants it to be that way because Oblio took his 1917 card away from Desi. So the struggle between those two I don't think is over. Um, not sure if uh, Oblio doesn't know that Desi wants 1917 to be paradoxed, however. So he is going to go and patch the both of those this turn and head back. Um, Desi is probably going to undo his work on his next turn. Another case of another case of uh, strong strong luck influence there. The fact that these two's cards um, directly directly um, counter each other is going to give them a disadvantage to everyone else in the game who doesn't have that uh, as their case. And Oblio made it back. He's taking a number right now. That's a three. That's much better. So there's Oblio as a turn three. Nun's at turn four. She's going to have to take another number this turn. Unless she wants to struggle with him. Um, it might actually be in her best interest to do so because uh, Oblio has a strong attack but a poor defense, so she's going to want to take him out quick. Uh, so she will use her flathead pipe claw hammer axe on Oblio right now. And that's going to be. She gets a plus three. So she's got him, so that's eight against two or against three that's a plus um, more than five so she can do the big she's going to destroy his Zorba's Volton pump right now and that will go ahead and go to the junkyard of the future and he has to disable a couple things so she just took Oblio out of the game really I don't think he's got a, a much of a shot now now he could try to take her down with him though we'll see what he decides to do and Nun is now there as well, so let's get his big roll, his big turn roll, see where he's at. One. 
Oh my gosh. So let me find out when the um, the the um, turn is incremented down. If it's incremented at the start of the turn, none or not none, but TD just won the game. Let's find out. And lo, he has done it. Um, I just so happen to be wearing a green shirt today, and TD, the green player, has won. That was unexpected. Um, there's a couple caveats to this whole game. I kind of just wanted to get out of the way. Uh, there's there's a lot of memory in this in this game, and there's a lot of like uh, deductive work and bluffing and everything like that, which makes it a very difficult um, multiplayer solitaire game for me to play. I wasn't really tracking who knew what about what or who suspected what about what. I just kind of played them all so that they were just um, following their own goals uh, rather than trying so much to to work out what other people's secret IDs were. Could have been very different otherwise. If people had been, they had all been sitting at a table and someone had been more observant and maybe noticed what sorts of things TD was going for, someone might have stopped him. That didn't end up being the case though. Um, I just, yeah, it, it's a large part probably just my own failings in terms of doing the game. But, um, you know, I, I don't know that T TD wasn't one of the disadvantaged ones, but he wasn't one of the advantaged ones either. So I think, you know, he won fair and square. Um, I, feel, I feel good about it. I think the game worked pretty well. I think it could have gone on and on and on if he hadn't had that lucky roll. So I'm kind of grateful for it because... You know, it could have been just a case of uh, a lot of games where um, whoever doesn't get screwed over the whoever gets screwed over the least by the other players, not screwed over, but whoever gets uh, inhibited the least by the other players, ends up winning. Um, it's kind of like uh, there's some games where it comes down to luck, but if you you can um, manipulate it so that you have a better chance of winning, but it's you can never like fully control that. And that's always the, the case to some degree in multiplayer games, but this one I think maybe more so than some other ones, and that's kind of the US patent uh, influence. I think Chrononauts is also a little bit like that. So it's, it's true to both. Um, there are some kinks that would need to be worked out, I think, um, in this game in order for it to be, you know, a thoroughly enjoyable game. I think the combination game. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to try it out with people, though. I, humans, I feel like I'm ready to do that. And I feel like it was a nice place in the tournament. Um, I'm more interested in this game, I think, than, than in, in playing this game, I think, than in playing Chrononauts. And definitely more interested in, in playing it than U.S. Patent number one. So this is, um, just in terms of the tournament, I'm kind of... Part of the problem with doing these combination games is I get I get kind of more fixed on just getting the, the mechanisms down right than in the actual people involved. I kind of pay less attention to them. But this um, is funny and uh, uncanny in a way that this is the second person who was in my first ever real televised, I guess, or internetized real person game of Shogun, which I played with... Um, five different players. Three of them, I think, have been in the tournament so far. And this is the second one to actually make it into the, the, the fi semi-finals. Uh, the other one being, well, uh, in case you're watching these out of order, I won't say that person's name. But um, yeah, so Kaz and Kat is also in, in the tournament. She she could still get into the semi-finals too, which would be pretty hilarious. Uh, she has a she's in a much larger field of contestants though, so I would be pretty shocked. Though I guess the other player was also in a large field of contestants, so it's possible. But um, I wasn't thinking TD was going to win that one. I thought Nun had it, and then I was thinking maybe Oblio would come and take it, but Nun just took him down. And that's, that's that was kind of the multiplayer dynamic we saw at work there. What would have happened if TD hadn't got rolled a one? Um, it would have between been between him and Nun. Nun probably could have, it would have been a, t she had a much better defense than he did, so I think she probably could have taken him down. Um, who knows, you know, an Oglio could have also gotten involved. Um, and I guess the others could have gotten involved too. Uh, I think DJ Double J had a decent movement and she was maybe heading that way. It's really hard to say uh, once you get so many different um, um, unpredictable components 
involved, uh, which humans definitely are, and real people are as well, um, then it's really hard to say. But cheers to TD. Uh, he is going to be the Zytol player, which I think is kind of fitting for him in um, Throne World and then later on in Time Agent. Well done.